Welcome to the second part of this video on the channel mixer. So today we're going to use what we learned in the previous video and apply it to some photos. I'm Nicholas, let's go. So first of all, let's do a little recap of the first video. Um, in the top left hand corner of the screen here, we have what is written in the um, dark table documentation of how the channel mixer works. So it's a matrix multiplication, matrix multiplication, sorry, which turns out mathematically to be equivalent to these three equations here, where red out, green out, and blue out. So that is the output value, the result that you get, will be the input values of red, green, and blue multiplied by a number, um, the red, green, and blue of the red, um, the red tab, the green, the three green, red, green, green, and green, blue of the green tab, and the three cursors, blue, red, blue, green, and blue, blue, of the blue tab. So there are nine sliders. Each one um, will give the output color of the red, green, and blue colors. It's all explained in the first video. Um, so quickly then, what did we learn in the first video? We learned that you can change any color in a photo to any other color, no limits. To do that, there are an infinite number of solutions. And there are so many solutions that you could actually not only change any one color in the photo to any other color, you could actually change two colors of your choice in the photo to any two other colors and there would still be an infinite number of solutions. And you could even push it to say, with nine equations and nine unknowns, that you could have three colors in the photo turned into three any other colors of your choice. That is the, just to give you an idea of the uh, infinity, the huge vastness of solutions we are, have for these sliders, uh, the cursors, to, um, well, to, to, to achieve the change of color we want. So how will we make the choice between this vast number of solutions? Well, we'll make the choice by looking at the changes in the other colors. Um, why? Because every single color in the photo will change. When it's red out, green out, blue out, it's on every pixel of the photo. So you will change the color you're looking at into another color, but you will also change all the other colors in the photo. So that's why it's in the, um, it's, it's a white balance, uh, it's a white balance module. Uh, this uh, is in the color calibration, and the this channel mixer is inserted into the white balance because you are changing, um, and you can change dramatically the white balance with these uh, three uh, tabs. And the last part, which is just a little mathematical uh, thing, um, not difficult really, is if I just have a look at the multiplication here. When you multiply two numbers. There isn't one that's more important than the other. So the red R is one slider, and the red in is the value of the color, uh, the value of the pixel. And these two numbers have the same importance mathematically. So when we do the changes, we will not only look at what we're doing with the sliders, but we need to have a good look at the values of red in, green in, and blue in, because they are of the same importance. There we are. That's the recap. Um, don't hesitate to have another look at video number one before going into this one. Um, it will be a bit more practical and um, I hope we learn a few things then. Let's do that then. Let's start then with this first photo which was taken in the centre of France in uh, the Massif Central um, this summer in the afternoon and um, Let's try and edit this a little bit, edit the colours a bit. So first of all, um, the white balance, very important, is on camera reference. Exposure has been moved up just a little bit. The input colour profile is on Linear Act 2020. I didn't do much to filmic, um, just the white point and black relative exposures, they haven't moved much, I didn't touch any of the rest, just to keep um, something very natural. Um, here on the instead of the histogram i'm using the vector scope so just by clicking this you go from histogram to through them all to the rgb parade and vector scope and that's what we'll use for uh, the channel mixer 
Uh, let's set the Y balance globally for the whole photo. So let's go on chromatic adaptation and with the white balance let's do a measure on the whole of the photo and that's not too bad uh, it's better but if I move it down just a little bit to make the greens a bit less yellow a bit more green and that seems to be a bit better so let's say that that white balance is set correctly and let's use the channel mixer to make um, a creative choice uh, let's say we want to turn the sky a little bit cyan um, I'll make a new instance of the color calibration module just so I'm sure for the demonstration that I'm not changing the white balance at all. So what do we need to do? We need to change the sky from blue to cyan. Now the vector scope is useful for this because cyan you see is a mixture, an additive mixture of green and blue. So if I already have some blue and I want cyan I need to add some green. So in the green tab this is the output green. Um, there's an infinite number of solutions for this, remember, to get a cyan sky. And all the different solutions will have a different effect, a secondary effect on the other colours. So here, naturally on the greens. So let's see, if I input the, use the input red and add some green using the red channel, I get a cyan sky. If I add green using the green channel, I get a cyan sky and if I add green using the blue input I get a cyan sky as well. So either of the, th of the three individually or any mixture of the three but also that's by adding so using positive numbers but adding green is the same as subtracting the opposite colour magenta so subtracting blue and red. So if I, I subtract red from randomly anywhere and I subtract blue let's say from then I get a cyan sky as well now the effect on the overall photo is different every time so the whole thing is how do you choose which of these solutions well I'll reset that I'm only going to use positive numbers because I find it easier to start with to add because then I can target the colors using the color wheel here a bit easier Let's do an experiment. So using the colour picker, I'll take a live sample in the greens and a live sample in the blues. And we'll have a look at the values, red, green and blue. So there is a certain amount of red, green and blue in each of these two colours. Let's say that we use the input red. Here I have a value of 100 and I want to um, add some green. Let's say I want to go to 120. Let's fix that as a target, just for the sakes of the demonstration. And if I can manage to get this to 120, well, the sky will be more cyan than it is now. So let's go in the greens, input greens, and add. So if you see what's happening, is here you need to look. As I move this slider up, the greens, the two greens are changing and I want a target of 120 target of 120, there we are that's 122 it happened when I let go of the mouse there, 120 so I have a cyan sky and the green has turned very green so what has changed in the colours? well, these two values have changed and those are the only two that have changed so I've gone from 59 to 75 for the green sample and from 100 to 120 in the blue sample. Oh wait a minute, I had a change here too, look. 60 to 61, 31 to 32, 158 to 100. What's happening normally? The documentation says that I'm only changing the green output. Well I found this a bit strange, so I did ask the question on the forumpixel.us and the answer that was given to me was that these, uh, the colour picker is not using the same colour space as the, uh, the actual working space of the photo and it's the same with the histogram as well. They're not in the, so there are um, transformations between colour spaces uh, which can mean that these values um, can change because they're not in the same colour space but the actual colour is not 
um, it is the same color. There, are, that's what I understand. It's the same color. So we'd ignore the slight changes in these um, in these live samples for the reds and blues when you're changing green. There we are. So um, let's take a snapshot of that and remember that um, I achieved the 120 but the secondary effect was a 75 from 59 to 75 which is a huge change which means this has gone really bright green okay 59 to 75 go back let's do it with the blues I want to achieve 120 so I'm looking at the color samples and 119 I'm going to do a right click and just move this this is great for very precise changes 120 I was at if you're looking at the effect uh, no, sorry that's wrong one color calibration here 59 now to 63 so a very slight increase we're at 75 before so there's much less change in the greens but it is the same color in the sky let's have a look at the snapshot the sky is the same color oh no it's not well actually it's not the sky that's the same color it's this pixel here is the same color in both cases the rest has changed the whole of the color balance of the photo so now which do you prefer changing with input red or changing with input blue well the answer is clear to me it's the input blue because I have the nice cyan sky but I haven't changed that much the reds now do you have to do this randomly or can we predict what's going to happen well obviously you can predict what happens and why these numbers in the formula I go 0 times 60 and 0 times 86 so I turn 0 times the reds plus 1 times the green and I add those two so for the moment I have just the greens because 0 times the red is 0 and then plus 0.133 times the blues now 1 0.133 times 158 is much bigger than 0.133 times 31 and the result of that is added onto the greens therefore the blues change a lot and the greens do not whereas if you do the same with the reds let's go to 120 120 too much 120 then it was 0 0.133 now the cursor needs to be the size is at 0 0.236 so it's not quite double nearly double so doubling what well 0 0.236 times 61 and 0 0.236 times 86 well there's not much difference between the two it's a lot in both cases and that is why what I was saying in the fourth point at the uh, in the introduction is that both numbers have equal value the slider and the input value if you have a big input value then it'll make a big change and if you have a big number on the cursor here on the slider you'll have a big change too so here I have a big change um, in both the samples plus one times the green so that is I'm keeping the greens as they are and zero times the blue so I'm not using these at all and that ex explains why it's a bigger change for this green sample whereas it's the same change for the blue sample so what do you need to do well very simply if you want to minimize the effect then you have a look at the colors and you take the biggest value of the color you want to change and the smallest value of the one you don't you have a look at the three channels and you have a look where the difference between the two is the greatest and that is where you'll have less um, secondary uh, effects on the rest of the photo um, you could also argue that um, you can just do a change in any channel then just mask out um, I don't agree to this approach really because um, we are in a white balance module color calibration is for setting white balance and I'm persuaded that if you have very different white balances in different parts of a photo um, especially if they added artificially 
then um, uh, I'm not sure you'll end up with something looking very natural. I think it would be very difficult. I think we should make smaller changes um, in the overall photo and try and keep a natural look. But that's your choice. You can also mask if you like. Okay, let's look at another photo, another picture and see, analyze it and see what we can change. Okay, so in this second photo, which some will recognize if you um, saw the uh, playlist, um, Dark Table First Steps, um, I edited this photo. Um, it was actually in a uh, previous version before Color Balance RGB. Um, was available to us so I've um, just added a little bit of chroma and saturation there we are replacing the previous uh, color balance otherwise it's the same photo and I'd like to add an instance of color calibration and use the channel mixer to give a bit of mood to the sky um, so this time I'm going to try and affect the sky again and um, Sorry, I still have the snapshot from the previous photo. Um, maybe turn it a little bit magenta um, and try not to affect the nice um, yellows, oranges of the sunset. So I'm on the vector scope here. I have a blue sky, but if we have a look, if you have a look at this, it looks blue. If you read it, it's actually very grey. The differences are not huge. Um, between the red, green and blue. It is a bit, it's a bit more blue, so let's say it's blue. Here we have some blue. And I'd like to turn those blues a little bit magenta. So to do that, to turn a blue magenta, I need to add some red. So this time we go to the red. And I do not want to affect the orange sky. So colour picker on. Let's pick a nice orange sky. And I forgot to turn the first one into a live sample. Let's get a blue live samples. I have two live samples. I want to change the reds and I want to affect these um, sunset tones the uh, the least. So if I have a look, um, there's a lot of red in the oranges so um, I don't want to use that. Um, I don't want to use the greens either because I have more greens in the orange color I don't want to change than in the blue I do want to change. And so the only solution I have here is to use the blue channel, but there's not that much difference. So I do know that I'm going to change. I, it's no other way around it. If I change the blues, I also change the oranges because the values are quite close. Okay, so let's go there and change the blue and turn the sky magenta. Now maybe, now I'm going to overdo it just a little bit. There we are. So this is before and that is after, so I'm actually adding red. And this is when you need to decide whether um, you actually like it or not. Because I had 210 and now I'm at 221. So I have changed quite a lot. Um, it's added 21 onto the reds here. Um, no, sorry, I can't count. It's added 11. And in the blues, I had 64, and now I'm at 84, so it's added 20. So it has added more into the blues than into the oranges, but it has changed the oranges. Um, and then it's up to you to decide whether you like it, whether it works or not. And I think this, in this case, it does. So that is one quick easy fix satisfied done move on the sky's gone purple um we could try as an experiment something else to achieve the same result um i want to add magenta so to add magenta i could remove greens and by removing colors i'm going to make them a little bit darker so i'm going to remove the greens i'm in the i'm in the rare uh, green sorry i'm in the green tab i want to remove greens and I want to remove them. Um, well, I'm going to use the blue channel again because that'll affect the least. The uh, it'll affect least the oranges. So I'm actually making the photo a little bit darker. Now, if that's a better mood, or see, it's just another option. I'm not saying it's better or worse. Okay, I'm overdoing this a little bit. Take a snapshot just to show. Move the other one. Take a snapshot. 
compare the two. So that was one, reset and add. So here I'm actually adding some luminosity because the sum is greater than one. And if I have a look at the snapshot between the two, so different, very different. Like we thought we were doing the same thing, but the actual difference is quite huge between the two. So it's up to you to see which one you prefer. Um, and you could do both. Let's set that to zero and let's add a bit of red. And let's remove some green. Now it's not normally it's not achieving the same thing because I'm only removing green. I should be removing some blue as well. If I want to get something a bit like it was before. Uh, because to turn the blues to magenta, I need to add red or remove cyan. So I said green before. It's, it works removing green, but really it would be removing cyan, which is a mixture of blue and green. So I can actually get a nice mood like that and that's the third choice so um there we are well, after that it's up to you to play around and uh, see what you like but using the vector scope here the the uh the color circle and if you know what you're doing with these tabs then out of the infinite number of solutions try a few see what's happening and take the one you pick uh no pick the one you like yes pick the one you prefer okay let's have a look with another photo and now for the last example uh, for the channel mixer, this photo of a distressed armchair that was dumped on a pavement in Paris. Um, so um, I'd like to make this photo look a bit old and dirty. Um, so I'd like to add kind of a global brown colour, a brownish tinge to the to the picture. So here I'm not trying to change one colour but and not and not the others. I want to add a global tint, so it's kind of a another example. Um, so I've done not much to this uh, raw file. The exposure has been changed a little bit. Filmic, there's very little done to filmic, just the white and uh, black relative exposures. The input color profile in Erect 2020 and color calibration for the moment, uh, I've done nothing. So um, what I'd like to do is, um, have a good colour balance so this pavement is grey so I'd like it to be grey so instead of taking the colour balance on the whole picture which is happening now um, I'd like to take it on the pavement well we can have a look if we look at the sample so where is the sample if I take a sample here this I think needs to be grey and it's not quite there's not enough red so it's too blue so what I could do is just take a sample here and then I get a much more even grey, 66, 66, 67. So there I have a good grey there and I'll add a new instance. What did I do? I duplicated it, sorry. New instance. So this is just for the channel mixer. So we're in none for the colour adaptation and I like to change the whole photo to brown. Now brown is a difficult colour to imagine. So let's go just into infinity and see what brown is. Um, here I have a brush and to make a brown, well really you need some red, about half as much green and less blue. So kind of a straight line between red, green and blue and you get kind of a brown and if you want to make it lighter, well it's something like this, something like a straight line between the two we make it lighter and we can have a lighter brown and all the, the tints of brown will change depending on how much of one or the other you put in but there we have the browns so just to remember a brown quite a lot of red about a, high, a bit less green and even less blue so okay back to dark table so now I need to add some here I have the, the, if you look at the pavement, I need to add quite a lot of red and about half as much green and leave the blues where they are. 
Um, what do I not want to change? Well, not much really, but there are some other colours on the picture I could look at. There's a blue here. If I look at the blue there. Uh, I've got the live sample, sorry, the blue is a live sample, and maybe the red door here. The red door. Um, try not to change everything into a uniform brown. So see where the other colours um, have less values than the uh, than the grey. So 61, 29, 29, at least these are even. So if I changed using the red input, then the blues and the reds would be changed about the same. So that might be an option. Or I could do it on the greens where I have 32, 16. Um, so the red would be less affected than the blue. And here I have 45, 13. So a lot more. Maybe I'll try do it on the greens. So it'll affect the blues, but it would affect... I'd keep a nice um, red. I'd kind of not change the reds too much. So let's use the greens. So I want to add red and add green using the input green. So let's add quite a lot of red. So I'm looking at this live sample of the grey. So I've gone from, it was 61, now it's 88. Okay, let's just for, uh, just to make it simple, uh, just at about 20. So 60 to 80 is 20, and then I'm going to try and add 10 to the 63. So green, and I'm going to do it on this on the greens. So turn it to about 70, and there I've got a nice. That is a brown. I've added brown to the um, to the grey here. Um, if I do before and after, the way I see I've lifted it to browns. Now the side effect of that is that by adding colours all the time. I've actually made the picture brighter. Now, you can use the brightness um, here and reduce the brightnesses here and mess around with that. Um, actually, just to show that we can do everything with the channel mixer, what I could do is, um, instead of just adding a lot of red and a medium amount of green and no blue, I could actually add a bit less red and less green and remove some blue just to keep the nice um, the progression between the blue, the green and the red. So let's reset that. Still use the green channel. And I'll move that to about 70. Um, no, about that. I'll add kind of a, just a tiny amount of green. I'm not even sure whether it's worth doing that. But I'll remove some blue. You see, and this time 63, 73, 53. I've got the same slope here. It doesn't mean it's the same uh, tint or, or colour, but it's about a slope. It gives a brownish look to the photo. So there I've gone from a bluish... Well, the colour balance is correct. It's a grey pavement, but I've added now kind of something a bit brown, and I haven't added that much luminosity because I've been adding and subtracting uh, using positive and negative numbers. So that is a way to do it. And after that, if you want to finish it off, you can always use the colour balance RGB and add in the four ways here just to finish. Um, I don't know, some kind of... If we kind of add a bit more, add a bit of a tint here, and a bit of a reddish, orangey tint there, and reduce the luminance. So you could do that in the highlights or the shadows. Um, no, it just affects it a little bit more. But um, the aim was to use the uh, channel mixer. So there we are for this video. Uh, we've seen different examples of how to use the channel mixer. I'm not saying that it's the only way to think about things, but I've shown you one way to uh, understand what it does and um, and to kind of get to where you want to be. Um, there, but look around uh, for other videos on the channel mixer. Uh, the more you learn, the more you see different people using different methods, then um, the easier things become. So, uh, well, there we are for this video, and I'll see you on the next.